When it comes to watercolor brushes, it can feel very overwhelming. There are so many types of brushes. There are many different price ranges of brushes. It's so easy to forget about what's important. And a lot of times there is confusion as to what brush to use when. So today I'm gonna simplify all of that for you. I'm gonna go through the different types of brushes that I have. Stay with me till the end of the video. I'm gonna talk about what three brushes I would use if I could only have three. As a general rule of thumb, when I am creating a painting, I'm painting from big to small. So at the beginning of my painting, I am using a large mop brush. And the reason why this is important is because the mop brush can hold a lot of water and a lot of pigment. And that is the time in my painting where I'm covering a lot of the paper. And so I don't have to go back and, and reload my brush so often. This right here is an Escoda brush. It's a size 16 round mop brush. And these are good brushes because when you load them up, they can still come to a nice fine point. So if you are painting around something where you wanna leave the white of the paper, these brushes are really good for that. Now, they are a little bit more expensive. This was a part of a Joseph Zbukvich box set of larger brushes. If you're looking for something that's a bit more affordable, I like to use Raphael Soft Aqua Brushes. Now this is a size six, and this is imitation squirrel hair. It's a lot cheaper. So those are the brushes that I use at the beginning of my painting. Then, after my painting dries, I'm into the large connected middle value shape of the scene. And that is when I need kind of a medium round size brush. I use this medium round brush. It is called a Dreamcatcher. It's from a site called cheapjoes.com. And this is a quality round brush I've had for a long time. Also, a very cheap alternative to this, this is a simple calligraphy brush. And lately, I've really been enjoying using this brush. I like it because it has a long handle. If I'm painting foliage or just wanna kinda of loosen up a little bit, this is a nice brush for that. After I get through the large connected shape of the scene, then it's time to paint the darks and the details. That's when I typically use a smaller synthetic brush that comes to a point. And what I like to use are these size 12 Escoda Perla brushes. They come to a really nice point and they are perfect for the little details of the scene. If I'm painting a car, if I'm painting figures, things where I need to be more precise, that's really good to use. Now I also have a smaller version of that Perla brush, and this is a size six. If I need even more fine details, like really small marks, I would use something like that. Now aside from those basic brushes, sometimes I need to paint branches or the rigging on a boat, things that have really fine lines. That's when I use a rigger brush. And this is an Escoda size four rigger brush. There are so many different brands that are just fine, but you want something that has longer hairs and that can come to a nice point. These are for those quick little fine lines that you need, anything like that. Another thing that I like to use sometimes is called a sign writer's brush. What I like about this is it can come to a really, really fine point and it can hold a lot of water. Also, it's just fun to experiment and try different brushes. A lot of times I find that students are really, really interested in the supplies, getting the right thing. Supplies are important. I think the most important supplies is probably your paper, using a high quality paper. And I use Saunders Waterford 140 pound 100% cotton paper. I think that's the important thing is using 100% cotton paper. Using good paints. I use Daniel Smith paints. They're really um, rich and vibrant. They mix really well. Some brushes are nice. You can notice a big difference. They make really cool, interesting marks. But I do think that all that is secondary to learning very important fundamental rules of painting. Practicing your drawing, learning perspective, working on values and watercolor timing. I think all of those are more important than getting the right supplies. So if you feel like you're struggling with those things, you don't necessarily need to run out and grab expensive materials. You need to work on those things and those fundamentals. And those things aren't exciting, they're not flashy, they're not quick fixes, but those are the things that are definitely gonna make your paintings better. If you're looking to learn more about those things, I do offer an online course. You can follow this link to learn more about that online course that teaches these fundamental important things about watercolor. Back to brushes. So if I only had three brushes, I'd probably do something like this soft aqua size six. So I have my large mop brush to cover a good amount of the paper. You need something like that. And then if I was really on a budget, 
I would just get one of these calligraphy brushes. It's a little different than this medium round brush. It doesn't hold as much. Um, you might get some different marks. It's, it's a little different mixing with this brush. And then I would get a synthetic brush with a point. So something like this. It doesn't have to be an Escoda Perla brush, size 12, but just something that comes to a nice point. What is nice about this brush is, you can't tell this on camera, but it's uh, kind of springy. Like it's not a super, super soft brush. It comes to a good point, so you can get those nice little fine marks. So that's my rundown of brushes. You know, it's good to know about brushes, but the headline is the brushes come secondary to the knowledge that you have about watercolor timing and values and other things that really are gonna make your painting work. Have you ever been really excited about a painting and you get all set up, you find that right reference that you're excited about and then it's time to go and you feel lost? You ever had that experience? You just are having a hard time finding consistency. Some of your paintings turn out, some of your paintings don't turn out and you're not really sure why. Well, I have a free resource that I wanna to give to you today that can help with these problems my five steps to plan a successful watercolor painting. I walk you through the crucial planning phase of your painting that will help you understand what you're going to paint first, second, and third. The planning is really so important, especially in watercolor. This medium is harder to correct. It's so immediate. So having that plan is very important. I send you a PDF that you can download. And the great thing about this is you can have it on your phone, you could print it out, and you can take a look at these crucial planning steps before you start each painting to ensure that you're thinking through these important things as you get started. You can download this right now before you start your next painting. All you have to do is follow this link here and download my five-step guide to planning a successful watercolor painting.